Welcome back to another episode of the Stoop Podcast. This is episode 12 of season two of the Stoop Podcast. We back. Yes, we back. <laughs> yes, sir. Back with another special guest, somebody that I've known also for a very long time. I think when I went to OCC, we met. Yeah. So, wow, OCC. back in community college. And, you know, since then, I transferred to Wayne State, graduated, all type of shit. Mm-hmm. Then you you went off to do something else as well, right? Yeah, Central Michigan. Okay. Yeah. Now, were you able to graduate or nah? Nah, so okay. I, I was doing it for a minute, bro, but... When you find your purpose, it's, it's nothing. To that's do facts. Done, that's man. facts. So it's tell the people who you are, actually. Man, Go I'm ahead, uh, yourself. What up, though? It's Nico, 95 Nico, 95 yeah. Films, uh, <laughs> photographer, director, videographer, editor. I do it all. That man does a Literally, lot of things. I do everything, sure, man. For sure. A little bit of rap, too, yeah. back in your day. Yeah, it was yeah, just crazy. I used to do it all, man. Yeah. Music was, was life for real. It still is, but I feel like. You really gotta step back from everything and just find your passion for it. And I felt like my thing was more behind the scenes. For sure, for sure. Now that's funny because, you know, when I first met you, I didn't even know that you was nice with the camera or that yeah. you knew how to use the camera or anything. And I think through the years <laughs> of me watching you with a camera, I'm like, okay, yeah. this thing can actually do something. And then I think uh, two years ago, when we were shooting for one of my songs from the I Got Next EP, mm-hmm. which was All You Got, we had worked together on that on that project and for whatever reason that just it didn't fall through like i think it was something that i was looking for from that mm. from that project that we yeah. didn't necessarily get and so you know that's what happens sometimes with your art is yeah you gotta be serious about your art oh for bro, sure for sure time. and you'll put something together and then knock it down like jenga because it just didn't work for whatever reason so that's right yeah yeah okay man so shit glad to have you on the podcast now yeah. now that we can finally speak about some things i think last week or the week prior i saw you at the gym yeah and i was like look you know next time that you want to promo something next time you got something you feel me up your sleeve come up here let's talk about it so you here and i i kind of want to dive in real quick to like who you are and kind of why you here because man if, if you so if y'all don't know uh 95 so when did 95 films come about so 95 films came about for real i want to say uh like 2017 2018 okay. for real okay it was really when i was still up in central michigan and i really just started to figure out like what i wanted to do i knew i wanted to do something like behind the scenes but as in far as what i had no clue yeah at all so i come back home just trying to just stack up really just get my money together and I uh, wound up DMing uh, my director, Ronnie Kirk. And I was just like, hey, bro, I just want to learn how to do film. Mm-hmm. I just want to learn the ins and outs. And he was like, bro, come on. So I was just a PA. And from that, it really came by accident. Somebody, I always carried my camera with me. I had a Nikon. And everybody used to joke, like, bro, that's the worst camera in the world. Yeah. And at the time, like, bro, that's that's all I got for real. So for I'm sure. like, it is what it is. But mm-hmm. the quality of the pictures I would take were so good. But I was just doing it for fun, for real. In my opinion, because this is how I started off. That right there is an icon, right? Yeah, that's what I'm saying, That's an icon, bro, that's D3500. The quality, bro, it's, not, it's, it's the person. It's not the camera, It's the bro. best beginner camera you can that's get, nigga. Saying. Even it's like Google searchable that it's the best camera. But, bro. of course, when you want to do more things, you upgrade. You're going to oh, have yeah, to course. upgrade. But, yeah, nigga, like that Nikon mm-hmm. over there, nigga, the last visual I just shot on YouTube that I put out, that Knife Wonder, you mm. feel me, type uh, freestyle that I just did, I shot everything with that camera. Quality. So, I mean, yeah, for sure. And it's the lens, too. That lens cost me lens is everything, probably bro. double that camera body. I'm so, not surprised. Yeah, that's crazy. It's really, when you get the right lens, bro, it's everything just falls in the Yeah, so, so you started off with a Nikon, mm-hmm. and around this time, people are, I guess, they, they're hating because yeah, you ain't like, got the type bro, of You ain't got the, the Canon, you ain't got the Sony, but I'm like, man, it, it is what it is. Bro. So so what geared you to go past the fact that you had what everybody thought was a shitty camera? What made you want to keep going from that? Honestly, because, like, I'm not going to lie, I hate, I hate comparison so much, mm-hmm. but... Yeah. 
when I used to see other people's work at the time with better cameras than me, I, I'm putting out work that's so quality. People are like, oh, you must have a Sony. You must yeah. have that. I'm yeah. like, nah, bro. I really just got the Nikon. I'm For sure. So the, the results Nikon. of your quality you was getting, you was yeah. feeling was better than some of the top niggas who had better yeah, stuff. better better equipment. That's exactly how it goes, though. Yeah, yeah. yeah. for sure. It's real good. Mm -hmm. Gotta be. What, what, right now, what's your... What's the camera you working off right now? Right now, I got a uh, Sony A7 III. Okay. So, you like that? Like that. I, I ain't gonna lie, it's nice. It's nice for sure. He said I won't go back to that Nikon. <laughs> yeah, I can't do that. It, it's it's nice for sure. It's definitely worth it. But my main thing now is like I get so caught up in like the newest cameras. Mm. So once I see something new, like a new cinema camera, I'm like, dog, I need that. Like, I, know. I don't, I don't I know. even want this no more. But that's how it go for real. That's how it is with my mics. But yeah. sometimes you be like, I'm good with what I got. It's when you when you doing the most from it, you know what I'm saying? Like you get mm -hmm. everything out of it. And then when you got everything out of it, that's when you be like, should I get something? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? When you're a creator, you gotta upgrade whatever it is that makes you good at what you do, you got right? To. So eventually that's just what comes. Cause like, even now, I've been talking to this nigga about a computer. Like, bro, my computer I got, that bitch just, it's hit his max. And now yeah. I need an upgrade to be able to do some of these other things that I wanna do. You know, and uh, a lot of that is like production, pre-production, stuff like that, which obviously you do as well. Um, what are you working with right now in terms of the production? Like, or do you say 50-50, um, do you shoot more of, you know, photography or do you shoot more uh, videography? Honestly, it's it really comes down to 50-50. Okay. Where a lot of people, it's just mixed. Like, I, I'll get videos like music videos like events or weddings and stuff like that but for on the photography to photography side it's more so like like modeling and just stuff like that more in that nature so it really is 50 50 but it does depend on the season too okay like, what do you think you enjoy more like uh, what do you get the best satisfaction out of like the finished product wise a photo or like something that you well you know, it's a lot more that you got to put in the video. Yeah, for but sure, for sure. What would you say that you side more with? Uh, man, it's it's like, man, it's so hard to answer that question because I really look at it like a 50-50 thing to where it's you like two with different. Whatever, you just be like, I'm there. I'm, yeah. I'm like all so it's just So it's just the love. It's really just the love of the camera, love of, yeah. of the ability of whatever you create. No I ain't matter gonna lie. Photo, it's, yeah. it's that for real, but it's also the fact that the after effect. Like, yeah. I love making people look at themselves like, damn, like I did this. Yeah. Like, I, I put this out. Like I'm good at this. I'm I, I'm a good model. I'm I put out a good song. For like, sure. Just seeing that effect on people's faces, like, damn, like this could be on TV or something. Yeah, for like, sure. That kind of yeah. stuff. For sure. So. It gives you the kind of feeling that, you know, you get when you go to the barbershop hoping that your, <laughs> your barber gonna cut you right and you come yeah. out of that bitch like, oh yeah, I'm the man. Yeah. This, you feel me? So yeah. I can understand that. Um, That's exactly how it is with engineer. I'll be like, bit, I sent the mix and man so I hope they like it. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm so, so like happy that they like it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so for it sure. brings joy to them, and then it brings joy right back to yourself because it's like, okay, cool. And then it's a breath of fresh air because you hold your breath through the whole thing because you like, uh, I want this shit to look, look sweet, sound sweet, appear sweet. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Whatever the case may be, be the best professional work I gave to somebody. And then the next time I give the most professional work to yeah. somebody, you just keep getting better and better every time. Absolutely. It makes you happy. Absolutely. And speaking about happiness and things of that nature, um, like I said, we here because I saw that you were teasing um, a visual, a project. What, what, what are you actually defining what you're putting out or what you're going to put out? Um, so I'm putting out uh, my first short film. Short film. Yes, yeah. that's what it is. A short, short, film. short film. And so what, what kind of inspired you to even think about putting out a short film or why would you want to go that route as your first of something? Man, honestly, it was really the hardest decision ever because I started off, when I first started off writing, I was thinking so, like, way too big. Like, I was writing full features, meaning, like, 200, 300 pages. Right. And that's when I started off. And I'm going out to people like, hey, let's let's get this done. Right. But I got humbled real quick because people were like, we don't even, who are you? Right, right. Like, we're not about to put a budget behind something. Like, we don't know nothing about 
So from that point, um, I dumbed it down and started running like TV shows. Okay. So I'm like, okay, it's a smaller scale. Maybe I can get a budget for like, uh, like a pilot mm-hmm. and then get it going from there. So I would try to do that, but producers are still saying like, okay, we, we see that we see it, but we're going to need a little bit more, like more of a name right. or just more for real. That's really how it goes. It, Cause it's so hard to really get the funding that you need for certain projects. Sure. So <clears throat> I talked to one producer on the phone and he, that was probably the best conversation I ever heard in a long time because he really just broke it down to me. It was like, bro, you know how to shoot. You know how to edit. Mm. What are you waiting for? Mm. I don't know it, why it took me so long to just hear somebody say that. They were right. like, I don't even know how to shoot. That's what they told me. They was like, I don't even know how to do that camera stuff. Like, I just know how to put people in the right positions, but you know how to do all of this. Right. What you waiting for? What are you waiting on for real? So I'm like, I ain't gonna lie, you're right. What are you waiting for? Man. Yeah. yeah, literally. So really from that, I um I wrote a couple shorts. Um, I picked one that I felt like I could really just this gonna be fun to shoot. Mm-hmm. Put it out on Instagram, like, who wanna be a part of it? The rest is history. I missed that part. Man, you maybe should, I should have tapped and, in. And you know what? The man. next time, man, because me and sure. Kate actually been talking about getting into other people's stuff. Yeah. And not just related. Like I said, it's not always related to music, but just mm. having a finding and a, and a love for something. I think being an extra in something. Yeah. Even, even for me, for niggas to be like, oh, shit, that nigga. Is that yeah. Barter in this bitch? You feel me? So uh, that's dope, man. And so your short film. It's coming on Friday, right? Yeah, Friday. Nah, I hate to date stuff, but we shooting this. This is what, July 18th, I believe? Uh, I think so, yeah. It's the Wednesday, July 18th. It's coming out on Friday. So what is that? The 20th, right? 21st. Okay, 21st. 21st. So maybe it's the 19th today. So the 21st, which is Friday, right? Mm-hmm. Okay, and what is the short film called? Last Night. Okay. Yeah. And can you get a people kind of a gist of what to expect from it? Man... The main thing I want to say is pay attention to detail. Okay. Like, you got to pay attention okay, to detail. Okay, Jordan Peele. Yeah, that's yeah. what <laughs> Yeah, that's because I feel like I love everybody, right? I feel like we're really in a renaissance for this creativity. Like sure. people in music, film, Tubi is going crazy right now. And it seemed like the only films that's popping is the ones from here. Yeah. Like being honest, and I feel like- I got to get on Tubi a little bit more to see. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. they they definitely out there for sure. But um, for this short film, I'm not going to lie, it's uh, a mystery suspense. And it's really just, I don't I don't want to give too way, too much away. All right, just give us, give us a background. Like, really, it's a guy, he, he's just waking up like the hangover for real. He doesn't remember, he doesn't remember uh, the night before. And the whole film is really just him retracing his steps, trying to dope. figure out what happened. But man, it's a lot of... Is it a, is it a, is it a, is it a movie... Uh based upon uh someone's uh dealing with things uh i would say if you ever seen the movie um joker the yeah. just the joker movie yeah. his relationship with the girl pretty much okay yeah it's I really like yeah like it's that. real similar yeah. to okay. that like, okay how that play is yeah. now now what type of uh style do you think that you kind of picked up on or created of your own. Cause now that we talking about it, I'm thinking about different things. Like you just mentioned the Joker, right? Yeah. And how that was shot and how that is totally different than the Joker that we saw the Heath Ledger play, yeah. right? And so um, is there a type of style? Because I know that you've worked with uh, some Detroit production companies around like uh, mm-hmm. Cheddar Boys, right? Yeah. And yeah. so um, have you been able to pick up on something like that, being at that, those type of sets? Yeah. And you, have you been able to, you know, use that for your own? Like, I don't know. I don't know how to really describe it, but in terms of style, you got your like Stephen King, right? Yeah, or your you're kind of like sonically legendary directors. Like, mm. is there anybody that you would say that you've modeled kind of like the way that you direct man i'm not gonna lie like i study film so much i watch so many movies Mm. just on a regular basis for real and i really just try to create my own but at the same time like i i get references from like christopher nolan Mm. tarantino um stephen king especially jordan peele because he's definitely changed the game but it's just like 
I, I feel like I'm bringing my own for sure. my own style because I sure. feel like that's that's the best for real. You know it's who remi- You know that statement reminded me of like you said that like Jor- Jor- uh, Michael uh, Michael B. Jordan. Mm. He uh he finally directed that that last Creed movie. Yeah, like that's kind of where my your mindset is kind of setting on me. You mm. know what I mean? Like he like Jordan Jordan Michael Michael B. Jordan was like uh taking a lot of styles from different type of uh, movies. And then even then he was an anime fan. So like, yeah. if you ever watched a part of like, uh, like a Vegeta versus Goku battle, like it was mm-hmm. a part in the actual Creed where he did like a punch, just like how when Goku and Vegeta had punched each other, like yeah. at simultaneously, and they both felt the punch. And then Vegeta looked at Goku like, nigga, you still, that's all you got left. <laughs> and he had like the Majin and shit, right? Mm. That was that, and then they did like the one shit when um when they both punched each other out. So like he takes even like certain styles of like uh like as in his first directed major directed movie, he mm. took a lot of certain uh styles of like all creations of film. You know what I'm saying? And creations of TV too. Like anime has the most deep rooted like storylines. But like, if you think about it, if you just sit there and watch, you'd be like, whoever this director was had to be really, really thinking. Man. Yeah, like the we writer, he had to be really, really thinking yeah. hard to put this together. So I can't wait to watch that your your short film yeah, because yeah. I'm, I'm gonna be sitting there asking some questions for sure. Oh yeah, definitely. It's it's I made it to where it's it's definitely possibilities to go on like part two part three like it's definitely that possibility so because i love i love an ending where it's not just given to you for sure so so that so your endings are more suspenseful more up in the air cliffhanger it's really up to the audience because i love hearing people just like oh i think this happened yeah. And somebody completely left would be like, oh, I thought this was going to happen. Yeah. Like, I love that kind of conversation. For real. I'm loving that, man. I'm loving that. Yeah. I would even say, uh, even today, you know, there's certain things that have come upon my mind. I think, how nostalgic would it be to have, like, a black Scooby Dooby Doo type <laughs> shit? You feel me? Like, some funny. city, some city type think, shit. Uh, where, like, like Scooby is, where, like, Scooby is the pit bull, but oh, then you got, funny. like, niggas. That's Man. funny. Yeah, like, but, like, they Snoop, trying to solve Snoop, mysteries and shit. Snoop Dogg will have to be Shaggy. Nah, that'd be, make, that'd be hard. to make Snoop Dogg like a... Like like Shaggy for sure. Yeah, he can pull off still being a little young nigga. And imagine Not young if, as hell, but. if they was if they was like solving <laughs> mysteries, like yeah. both. Like he a, could just be the old nigga with the dog. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Snoop could be like both on a level of like, oh yeah, like it can be on some gang shit. Like oh yeah, yeah. we need, we need to find out the mystery <laughs> who killed this nigga, or it could just be you feel me on some they friendly said shit. Said these meddling kids from the hood. <laughs> yeah. Hey, that'd be funny. Or some pro, or some proud family type. You never know. You and feel I can me? See some, it though. some some some. Live action proud family or something like that. But um, if it, not that y'all speaking of live action, have y'all ever watched uh Kung Fu Hustle? Man, I have. That's the greatest, I have. I nigga, I have. The greatest movie ever. Nigga, I literally just watched back Duh. went back and watched that shit. I'm gonna give y'all a story. My uncle, he was the one that introduced this movie to us. So he used to be the best uncle for this shit. I swear to God. The nigga used to put on the sub version. And he will read the whole movie like in character voice, right. like literally in character voice. Wow, all y'all yes, watching? <laughs> yes, bro. We would love that shit. Yeah. Uh, shout out to my uncle Cornell. That nigga used to have us rolling, That's bro, dope. watching that fucking movie, and I just rewatched it, and I was like, "This is why I used to really like the movie because it was so, it was it was directed honestly fair, like storyline. They didn't do too great of like." Uh, telling his actual backstory or where, like, yeah, we get it. His little boy. I think because the the movie is meant to be humorous. Yeah, like, that yeah, too, it's, that it's too. meant to be funny, but so it's it not so meant to add. Cold. Add that, too but much. it was yeah. cold it was because cold it reminded me of anime when I was yeah. watching the shit, bro. Yeah. I'm yeah. sitting here like, yo. The way the, the the crazy guy came out to him was like, let me sell you these books. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and he was like, nigga, you about to be the greatest, and you end up being the greatest. Uh. So it's like. Just watching some silly ass shit like that, yeah. like that, like I noticed, like even with just the 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 Chinese real life action shit, mm-hmm. they 
they real good at that shit too. Oh, it's for sure. It's just the VX yeah. effects make everything look worse. And they, they come <laughs> up with the, the best storylines. Like it's always yes. the storyline of the, the young guy overcoming whatever it is that he got to do. And then he finally gets to where he has to go. So. I ain't gonna lie to you, Pete. Most movies from like Western culture, this culture, they take all the storylines from anime. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah just make yeah. them their own. Yeah. That's literally yeah. all so it I, is. So I've noticed, for sure. Because all this shit come from like Buddhist... Like uh, Buddhist mythology, not is it Buddhist? some mythology that they end up a lot of uh, writers from like anime they take mm -hmm. from like Buddhist mythology and shit, and they implement it inside the story and like make certain uh, powers relevant to a Buddhist god or whatever. You know what I mean? Like how we do with like Thor. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. But mm -hmm. we end up. Uh, what was it? Uh, what, what, it was another oh think y'all remember son of the mass i know I, that i recognize I that name y'all remember the mask. Oh, that's the green the green mask yeah. right y'all remember the son of the mask i ain't seen i, that. I, I, I don't seen know the first son, one so I jim carrey was the first one okay yeah. and then old boy from Malibu boy most wanted was the second one and he had the baby and he had the dog i don't think and, i remember and the son baby of the was born out of his out of uh old dude wearing the mask so uh, he ended up taking on powers that the mask gave him. But guess what? Nigga, they end up doing Loki and and uh and and uh Thor's father in that movie too. Yeah. Because you pulling from Greek mythology hmm. and all this extra shit to make things make sense. So that mask was created from the uh what what, what do they call them? The the Prince of Mischief or something like that? Yeah. For, for, I for, see that. So it was so cool because you can implement even that into funny gestures. You know what I'm saying? Sure. So, like I said, like, I can't wait to watch your shit and see what you implement from mm -hmm. your styles that you end up liking. Like you said, you Stephen King, Jordan Peele, you know what I mean, uh, Tarantino. And actually, that's that's my uncle's favorite favorite uh, director. Tarantino, he's probably one of the best directors. Yeah. You yeah, know what I'm sure. saying? He brings sure. out some of the best out of the best actors, too. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? Jordan Peele the the best new on the scene director, writer. Mm. He's making people really think about his movies. And that's what Tarantino did. I'm gonna be honest though. I didn't like the last two Jordan Peele films like that. Which and was? that was Nope. And uh, even even uh, Us, I didn't really like that much. But, the, re it, uh, but us was, like the reason why is because um, I think because Get Out was so good, I mm. felt like he was trying to trying to do up yeah, yeah. trying to do the up the same shit can and it's like it's like man i kind of want you to be creative in that same sense but something totally different but can i keep just... it he, he did it different yes I that that like... was that's where it just didn't work no, right me. so when you go into a jordan peele movie you don't go into a jordan peele movie thinking about his last movie no. That's that's the no 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 that's what I'm saying like that's that's the that's the objective of his he make you want to think that hard to where it's like nigga do you really think I was trying to top this movie no it's actually have a point that I'm trying to make in this movie us point was so crazy it's so many points <laughs> like you gotta go rewatch that shit to be like yo there's a lot of symbolism what's the message the rabbit you know what I mean you know the underground place where people are the, it, it was, to me personally <laughs> that's where you yeah lose. because you, you have can, to it makes you, you think lose, too hard you can lose me sometimes yeah because it makes you think too hard and that, and, that, <laughs> and that be and that be the problem with a lot of like the general audience yeah so yeah. the people that are directors writers and the creators and certain people that appreciate just the art they're going in there thinking like that oh, because yeah. we we want to have an open mind. Now, you as a general audience, you trying to just, nigga, give me the shit right away. Like, I don't got yeah, time yeah. Yeah. to be overthinking what the fuck you've been writing about. Right, right, like, right. So I get what you're saying right. because you just, because uh, Get Out was, you had to think, but you knew what the fuck he he's spe he's about. spelling it out for you and i exactly. and I, i'm kind of like that actually i'm not because one of my favorite movies is inception you ever uh, seen inception yeah, yeah but inception was very very clear day i guess so it is a spell out from the yeah. from the jump but it just seemed like even you can you can just follow it and i don't know that's like so but you understood the movie so much to the point where you liked it but 
you liked us, but you thought he was trying to top, so that kind of threw you off. Because I guess so. You had to think so hard. You go into a Jordan Peele movie thinking, not not even about the last movie. For me, I go into it thinking, I, I like know, no I I know like no this either. is a Jordan Peele movie, yeah, so I God. know I'm expecting <clears throat> some type of theatrics. Mm. And... Um, you know that's what you that's what you're gonna get mostly. But you're, I mean, it's good though. It's good content. That's the oh, thing yeah. is you can't Still take good, away sure. his nope. greatness at all. Nope, was like here and there mm-hmm. for me. It was like I could tell what he was trying to go for mm-hmm. is because um, <clears throat> it is aliens. There is extraterrestrial uh, living, but it's the exploitation that he was trying to make mm. and then on top of that even knowing that something was there and and, and you're and you're and this this company end up this is how i viewed it this company guessed something was there thought it was there knew it was there so that's three points so really we just like hoping nothing happened so we could just keep making money and keep fooling people to say it's real, but in our minds, we know it's not real, but hopefully it's not real. Yeah. And it ended up becoming real, backfiring on them. Um, and then on two, it was a lot of points that I got where he was just saying, like, uh, with the movie of the unknown and what you can't see, uh, it makes you kind of keep moving forward f- faster instead of Instead of knowing what's in front of you. Because they always got stuck when they saw the shit. Yeah. You never yeah. noticed that. Yeah. Like, you like this. But they always told you, never look up. Keep mm. going. Don't get stuck in the shade. Keep going. So you finally, you can think while you're moving too. But when you stuck inside this, like, this gaze and whatever, the internet and all that, you, you, you. You getting you getting pulled in, so that's what happened. They got pulled in, so that's how I kind of mm-hmm. that's kind of how I viewed that's, it. That's interesting. For you know what sure. I'm saying? Because Jordan Poole, you have to. He has a lot of nuance, <clears throat> and having a lot of nuance in your movies, certain people are gonna catch it, but a lot of people aren't. Do you know what I'm saying? Which I think is is the topic of conversation. You want to be able to provide conversation, and uh, yes, yes. that that goes into my next point actually, which was. You know, I remember you. You want to go into that actually? What you want to do? We can we can go into the segment. So we're gonna go into our first segment of this podcast, which is top five. <clears throat> and uh, this top five, um, I kind of want. We was gonna do movies, but I kind of want to do actors because I'm because I'm excited man. to hear yeah, who are your dope. top five. Because these be actors that you actors, probably actresses, love to work with. But yeah, and uh, and that's uh, what I was gonna go into too. Is after we talk about your top five, then I want you to name one person from the city that you would love to be on your production, and one person just out there, you know, in the, in the Oscars, Hollywood, Hollywood, whatever that you would love to work with. But yeah, your top five Easy. actors. Ah uh, man, it's so hard. Uh, I gotta say Robert De Niro for sure. Okay, definitely up there. Uh, Denzel. If Denzel not in your top, yeah. if Denzel is not he in like, everybody's top five, uh, I mean, be that's there. for sure. Um, Samuel Jackson, for sure. Okay, Samuel. Samuel Jackson. You watching Secret Invasion right now? Oh, yeah, the show is amazing. Yeah, he's doing great. That show is amazing, for sure. I have, I'm not, where's that on Disney? Yeah, Disney. Probably. I don't that have Disney. That's, that's the only it's thing. Fire for sure. Get I it, know, man. but I, <laughs> I'm, I'm actually boycotting Disney right now. <laughs> wow. We didn't talk about that off the show. But yeah, so that was three. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, I ain't got a lot of actors. Jackie Chan, he do his own stuff. Okay, yeah, for sure. You gotta respect him. That's a good one. And also, now, uh, there's another guy who does his own stunts. Who does the, the Tom Mich- Cruise? Yeah, Tom Cruise. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But Tom Cruise not in your top five. I ain't gonna lie, he he ain't the best actor. He not, he, I'm not gonna even <laughs> but say he that. He does his own stunts. I think I think a Tom Cruise is, said is a great Chan, actor. A lot of niggas said Jackie Chan wasn't the best actor. He, My, but he, he, but he, put, stunts, he put contacts yeah. on Jackie Chan. He do his own stunts though. Yeah, so he I'm put like, contacts okay. on that. And it's your favorite too. Why am I even talking? <laughs> I'm trying to get Jackie out your top five. Like, That's nah, crazy. He, he, he ain't good enough. No, nah, I mean, you already know my favorite movie. That was so. context, though. You like Jack, you like Jackie like Chan because he does his own stunts. Yeah, stunts uh, Who else? Leo. Leo DiCaprio. Okay, Leo. Leo. So you did Leo not have Will Smith. They, they gave that man the no. privilege. No Will Smith? No. No. <laughs> no. Shout out Will to Will Smith, not- but... 
He ain't the best actor either. Actor. Yeah. No. Not in his top five. Man. Man. I'll take Chris Tucker over that nigga. <laughs> Damn. Hey, you can't. I ain't gonna lie, that's bad. This is tough for sure. Hey, you know Tucker is my guy. That's you know, my guy. You know Tucker, Tucker ain't even had the bro. most serious roles like Will, though. That's what I'm saying. I, like, I Am bro. Legend is a motherfucking classic. And they're coming Great out with movie. a second movie. A second I that's Am Legend. I, Robot is a classic. Yeah, Great nigga. Movie, he, bro. Got, he got classic. He got hits. For, for sure. sure. But you just said Love. Chris Tucker. No, no Martin Lawrence. Martin Lawrence is a comedian. I ain't like... Is that not count? Bad Boys too. I mean, that's a that's a classic for sure. But for sure. it's like Martin Lawrence got other shit. No, he, Bad he Boys, played a blue streak. He played a blue streak. That's my shit right, right there. Right. That's, that's He's just movie. always the comedic relief. That's all. I yeah. guess so. I guess so. So he could play in a, a serious role, mm. but he could. How be about the comedic another comedic relief. actor then? Eddie Murphy. And Eddie Murphy done play a lot Hill of roles, and yeah. he done play Norbit. When yeah. he was, where he was, Norbert and the bitch. But that was funny. funny. Like, yeah, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, Norbert, yeah, Norbert was funny as but, shit. Nah, I okay. can't do it. I can't do it. All right. I can't do it, bro. That's dope. Okay, so that was your top five. Now, name somebody from the city that you would love to be on your production, even as a cameo or whatever. Because um, I'm thinking the one that I, I would love to see off your, your uh, director. Who you, I want to hear what you got to say. Honestly, I think you would be able to do well with somebody like Babyface Ray. Mm -hmm. And you'll be able to put him in the light that he'd want to be in. You feel me? For what he'd want to do, I think. Mm -hmm. um, I could yeah, definitely see that. Sure. Yeah, I that could see that. Dope. Who do you think? Uh, I ain't going to lie. What's her name right now? Mina. Mina Monroe, she definitely... She got the hottest movie right now. So I definitely... Mina Monroe. I need I to get hit to her. Uh, she on Tubi. Yeah, she got Mina the hottest figure. movie on Tubi right now. I need so to get hit. You got to... You gotta get hit for sure. But okay. yeah, I definitely love to work with her because is she from the city? Yeah, really, bro. She she writing, she directing, she act actress. So it's like really, why not have that same energy going? Yeah, on? Mina so, Monroe. And have sure. you met her before? Yeah, on okay. a couple uh, like Cheddar Boy says for sure. But I figured it's networking. That's what it's all about, bro. You just you got to network. If you're not. You're you losing out. Yeah, nah, and, and I'm gonna hit on that Cheddar Boys point after we make Man. this last point. So, uh, Mina Monroe from the city, and then who out of the city would you love to? to out work of with? the city, um, they could be in your top five. Did you put Denzel in your top five? He did. Yeah, he did. Okay, he did. I, I, I yeah, he did. I had to. Um, I ain't gonna lie. I would love to work with Kanye. Okay. If I could do a film with Kanye, that would be the greatest thing to touch the earth. That would be part, that would be crazy. You know, but, yeah. keep it Can you I'd get rather, that I'd nigga to participate? I'd rather a city nigga work with him because that'd be the every one nigga yeah. to tell him, bro, you've been bullshitting. You've been on some bullshit. <laughs> nigga, hey, we about to work on this film, but you've been on some bullshit. Okay, yeah. we gonna have a real nigga talk later and shit, but I'm gonna tell you about yourself, okay? <laughs> one of my favorite films, actually, that's like mixed because in. Like from the music and the the I film like I know is, the, is the is uh, the dark yeah. twisted fantasy was, film. Bro, I watched that so much. That's a, that thirty so minute film. From Remember, that, I, I showed you that. I don't know how many songs. How you pulled yeah. up with the Marcy? Yeah, the Marcelago, uh Lamborghini nigga. Oh, I'm a Michael the, Jackson fan. With the oh, Phoenix, same. yeah, yeah. I love, yeah. I love, I love, I, when it come to like the the court, like nigga, my favorite one was with him and Chris Tucker. You mm -hmm. rock my world, you nigga. That whole shit. That whole video, yeah. That was yeah. a movie to me as yeah. a child. As a child, bro, I was literally like, bro, Michael Jackson can do movies too. And you know, speaking about Mike, and not everybody knows this on the podcast. Rest pod, in peace, but, my baby. Yeah, rest in peace. I guess I'm gonna say what it is. So I got a white girlfriend, and so <laughs> nigga, not, not too, not too long ago, I'm talking a week and a half ago, we sat there and watched The Wiz. She never, yeah. she never seen it. Yeah, she never, people, yeah, she never, knew, she never knew nothing about it. So I'm yeah. like, nigga, what the fuck? We gotta watch you this. So like, in. so like, we we did like the what I would call the Cliff Notes version of watching it. So every like ten minutes, I'm like, yeah. Just go through and watch <laughs> kind of just like everything that they do. I explain it. And so we <laughs> end up watching the movie like when, it, you know what I mean? Because that movie is long it's as long shit. As hell, yeah. So like I, I was just like, shit, let's not waste our time watching this whole thing. But I'm going to get you through it. And, you know, she was actually surprised like in terms of like the culture and what we able to do mm -hmm. and how we are able to flip it to be our own. And uh, yeah, that was dope showing her that because it's like, what the fuck? You never heard of The Wiz? Yeah, you'd be surprised how many people never even... Yeah, heard of that movie yeah, because the Wiz movie. was like one of those uh, movies that because I, I actually played in the play. I was a uh, Michael Jackson, mm. but uh, yeah. the Wiz at that time was one of those like come together movies. Mm. You know what I mean? There was a lot going on. 
with black people, the segregation and all that. Extra it's shit. it's in our community. So, it is it's it's pretty much like a staple. Like it's yeah, pretty much something yeah. that you should watch. You know what yeah, I mean? It's like it's like Roots. Yeah, but if you ain't never watched Roots as a child, right? Or, the, or you like, should go watch it as a grown up. <laughs> yeah, like you know, the I, Color Purple. Like it's a bunch of movies. Yes. It's a bunch of movies that you know. You got You have to watch. Mm-hmm. Like you just got to. Like nigga, Green Mile. <laughs> you ever seen Green Mile? That's a sad movie. Man, bro. man, sad, man. But it, I, I just, Saki, I just, da, da. <laughs> I just think about all. So the, does he say color purple? That's all I heard. All the, all the films that you know, iconically have been a part of the culture, and necessarily like. You know, outside of the culture, people have no clue about, you know, mm-hmm. and and it's funny because, you know, even growing up, nigga, you lose your black card. You don't know some of the movies that that niggas Man. thought you should know. Nigga, Friday, Friday, you know, any Friday series. Yeah, I, just, I, any, I, didn't watch, I didn't watch Juice until I was in high school. Really? Man. Like my cousins used to be like, make Juice references. And I used to be like, what? And then you as you get because mind you, you when you a kid outside. You don't watch TV for sure. Like only time I watched TV was nigga when I was in the house and mm-hmm. when it was dark outside because I had to be in the house because the street lights. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. But when it come to watching movies, like I didn't grow up with a mom that made me watch. I mean, that let me watch any type of movie either. Mm-hmm. So it was like I was outside in the hood seeing everything that y'all yeah. watching on TV <laughs> for real. I ain't gonna lie. So when niggas when niggas was watching Boys in the Hood and. You know what I'm saying? Juice and belly. Yeah, I was outside hooping. You feel me? Throwing, doing 30 seconds and shit like that. You know what I'm saying? But once I got to high school, I was in the house all the time because I went to a burb school. Mm. Nigga, I wasn't outside with them niggas. So I'm, I'm, inside, I'm inside watching movies. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? The only time I was outside was walking to basketball practice. Nigga, that was it. Other than that, nigga, black movies of all time, Black movies of all time. What, what, what y'all think? What do I think? You gotta have I mean, pay them full in there. Pay them full. You got to. I'll put eat different. <laughs> got I'll, to, I will bro. put pay pay them full definitely in there. Mm. Black movies. Cause you damn near just said the ultimate though. I mean, yeah, we. I the mean, color purple was yeah. the ultimate black movie. Yeah, I mean, we done. Like, come on now. I mean, maybe, maybe, or, maybe even recently, if you if you a black nigga ain't seen. Well, I don't know about what? it. I was gonna say Django, but I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. That's like know, modern I, I, day. I, I but that's that a good movie, ass movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah nah, that's, that's like movie. that's like that's modern day. Like movie. niggas should watch that. You know what I mean? I'm trying to think about some other. But I ain't gonna like, lie. Like the color purple. Like all these are like stamp black. Yeah, movies. that's what I'm saying for sure. But I'm not gonna lie to you. Like maybe not our generation, but like the ones coming up now, they have no idea yeah, they have no idea. what that is. Oh, no, like, no, for sure. But they are and, getting uh, new deriver, they are getting new derived versions of them. Yeah, but sometimes is that... It's not the same. Is that, yeah, that's something they don't have they coming out with effect. a new color purple. Fantasia. Is that right? Uh, yeah, Fantasia. Okay. I think, uh, but it's really like a musical though. Yeah. So this is going to be musical, so it ain't like they trying to redo the movie for real they just redoing a movie in a musical Bro, it's, it's i feel like it's it's so many remakes now yeah. i mean it's good as you're trying to expand the idea to like a newer audience but it's like bro you got so many other ideas you could tap into so many original content yeah bro, yeah you don't got to keep recycling yeah the same thing. i think it's hard because when you when you think about how people understand or get their data it's mostly mm-hmm. because of trends right yeah. and so a lot of times you'll see people just ride the trend because they know that it's going to be picked up right yeah. and uh the things that are more creative you gotta really be really creative out there. To, yeah, because to, if you if you it's a hit or miss on all of it yeah so yeah. take your favorite cartoon spongebob or even your favorite adult cartoon family family guy uh, Simpsons. Uh, let's keep going. Nigga, my favorite cartoon was actually Samurai Jack. Well, we just talking about, about, we talking about the ones that's, that's being show. resurfaced. Yeah, though. yeah, yeah. So those are. Would you ones put Boondocks that, in that? Boondocks ain't being resurfaced no more. They not. They not making new episodes. They not trying to remake a, something new. Like I can give you a prime example of a remake that did not work for children. Benton. They yeah, put it. No. They put out a remake version. No, I'll yeah. tell you what. They had, uh, what's that show? They probably made a new one, didn't they? Yeah, they yeah. made a new one. What's that? Uh, I ain't gonna lie. My show back in the day, it was it was on. A, I think it was on a Disney Channel. 
American Dragon. Yeah, really? American Dragon oh. was my shit too. That was my show. But when they changed it came the animation, and yeah, they it changed fucked, it. I was like, with me. It oh, fucked with I'm me. I'm like, I'm good. So like, did. even with those type of situations, just changing shit up within yo, yeah. it's like it's a hit or miss all the time. Yeah. But like, when you see something working, you gonna see that shit yeah. being re like. That's what it is. An anime world, like. That's why Naruto is able to have a to have a franchise that they have now. Dragon Ball is able to have a franchise that they have now. You know what I mean? Like, we don't want to see no more Goku battles, but yeah. we do. Yeah. We kind of do. Like, no cap. It's not it's not bad, but if y'all able to give us something crazy as hell, we, we'll love it. Shit, same thing Pikachu. Nigga, you know how many times they done made, we made and remade and Keep remade re fucking Pikachu? Yeah, Pokemon, yeah. I guess you're right. Yeah. It's just, it's it's all about what you want to take in. Because, like, even now, like, the only reason I really watch a lot of movies more now than, than recently is because my girl, she like quality time. So that's mm. what we do. We watch something or something like that. And she's a binge watcher. Like, mm. so I'm telling you, like, she'll watch, like, she done watch all the seasons of Grey's Anatomy. And, like, I'm not big yeah, on none of, of that shit, right? I ain't gonna lie, that's a great show. Yeah, yeah. well, hey, <laughs> that's I mean, a great show. She's, 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 I actually she's, got stuck watching that shit. He was. Same, bro. That's what I would say she, she's good at spotting, um, like, good writers mm. and even now right we're in this like era of time where writers have to go on strike to be yeah. able to be paid what they need to be paid yeah. for us to see you know kind of the content that that should be seen and i look at a writer just like a music writer right that's mm. the person that's putting the meat and potatoes the recipe together right for yeah. somebody to cook and to put it together and without the recipe i mean the food is there but it's not gonna taste as good it's not gonna come out as good so yeah it's like a tv dinner yeah, so it's so, like you yeah. trying to go sit here and make some some chicken Alfredo, but you want to go buy you a TV dinner because you ain't got no patience to make the fucking Alfredo. Yeah, nah, and and it's, it's take, really take this TV dinner taste, <laughs> motherfucker. It's, it is really <laughs> fucking up a lot of productions now. So I think this would be a perfect time for you to keep ripping these boys out and keep yeah. you know getting your name heard throughout the city that way. Because yeah, because you don't got no connection to the industry right now, so you can keep doing what you got. That's what it is. That's you don't got to go on strike, right? nigga. Yeah, just keep getting. Keep putting in work. I mean, there is is his original production. Yeah, so that's what I'm saying. Yeah, like, like you good. Sure. We, we, we good over here. Yeah, that's sure. all right. We gonna Actors, y'all good. Yeah. Producers, y'all good. Everything. I definitely look forward to this. I was gonna say too, uh, going back to um the topic at hand. Have you ever seen uh one of them episodes of Atlanta? Uh, where uh, Childish Gambino kind of wakes up from the night before and they have their whole little oh, thing. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. And so that's what kind of, it gave me that kind of idea. But mm -hmm. when you said it's a mystery, like like I said, I'm yeah. I'm definitely looking forward to that. Mystery yeah, for suspense. sure. I like it. For I sure. I like yeah, I just like try that. to, uh, I like to just think outside the box. Like, I see stuff all the time and it's good content, but it's like, what can I do that's going to make somebody be like, hold on, I ain't never... Yeah. I ain't never seen that from that's here. A, that's exactly yeah, that's, <laughs> yeah, that's exactly what we're looking for, yeah, man. For sure. So I'm like, no, I'm trying to, I'm trying to push, push that envelope and just really do what I can for it. Just give the city something different. And I just want to. Really, I'm just proud of myself that I, I made a movie. Yeah, for sure. So I'm like, I mean, hey. that's isn't that, the, and that's where it starts, right? Because when you can make yeah. one, you can make many. Now yeah. I know who's starring in this, so I'm gonna go ahead and have you <laughs> tell the people who's starring in this. Man, hold on, let me get these names because I don't want to say nobody's names wrong. And, yeah, uh, get the list. Get the list. And, uh, now, while you get the list, I just wanted to tell the people as well. Look, look out for what's coming next month in August. I'm gonna be dropping. Probably two or three more visuals, and we're gonna have a project coming out. So yes, sir. just look out for that. Project will be titled. I don't we don't, we don't know nothing yet, but just <laughs> but look out for know. it for sure. But bet uh I got uh my main person, the main actor is uh Marcus Bradford. I grew up with shout him. out to Marcus. For real, came yeah. a long way, he's still going crazy. Yeah. Uh supporting actor, uh Paris Hamilton. Okay. I actually met her on Instagram really just put out an open casting. And I was so surprised, like, I don't know if it was just a lack of me believing in myself, but I put out on Instagram, I'm like, who this, I'm putting, I'm making a short film, mm -hmm. who trying to be in it? Then people was tapping in, like, a lot of people, and yeah. I just did not expect that. I'm like, oh, shit. It's I good gotta, to have choices, nigga. Man, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> I'm like, dog, but 
that was that was a whole mess in itself. But um, who else? We got uh, Caleb Johnson, uh, Paige Nicole. Shout Xavier. out to Caleb. Yep. Yeah. OCC days. Yeah, that's, man, that's crazy. What I'm saying. Putting your people on. That's what you got to do. Yeah. Uh, Paige Nicole, Xavier Crawford, Amari Rosie, and Michael Bradford. Nah, is that Xavier Crawford? I know him too. Is that the Zay I know? Uh, Did he go to OCC? No, no, no. Not okay. that one. No, I not was going to say, I got to show love to everybody I know off there. Yeah, that's shout out to do. everybody on that yeah. casting list, man. Man. For sure. And so, um, was this a one camera deal or did you have other other man. people help you as well? When I tell you, this was a one man show. Okay. One man show. I'm talking about, I'm doing audio, uh, recording, editing, like every single thing. And it's... I'm not gonna lie, if I didn't work on like numerous sets over the years, I have no idea what I'm doing. Mm. I have no clue. So Well, before I end the pod, I did wanna go through and talk about some of the other um kind of like experiences that you've had. Mm. We've we we talked about Cheddar Boys, but is there any other um like notable productions that you work with along your way and your journey before, mm. you know, obviously being able to create what you can create now? Um, I did a couple productions with uh, Woolworth Original. Okay. So they own like so much stuff, like just downtown in general, and they more focused like on like commercial based. But just being on different sets, it shows you so much about like really a divide. It's a divide in the film industry, and it's so crazy because you got people over here with a budget, and you got people without a budget. Yeah. But they're still making the same content. Yeah. So it's just like, I don't understand the division. It doesn't really have to be there. But just being there, it's always a blessing just to learn. And I feel like even from making this film, I'm constantly learning. Like, I learned so much making my own film now. So the second one, I know is going to be... It's gonna be for crazy sure. for sure, and, there, and, man, and I'm man. and I'm gonna put it out there too. I'm gonna somehow I'm gonna be involved in that. You got whether to. whether I I'm you the nigga to, who hold sure. up the action <laughs> shit or whether I'm in the, the the feature film. Um, that's something I look forward to too, man. It's yeah. actually just kind of along your journey being there wherever I can help out. Um, because that's what it's about, man. And a lot of times when you tap in with people that you have a long history with, it's mm. easy for them to be able to you know pick up where you left off, mm -hmm. sit down, talk about it, and then execute those things, man. Yeah. So, it's that synergy. Oh, yeah, man. I'm looking forward to that, man. Now, is there any other shout-outs that you want to have or that you want to say on the podcast before we end the pod? I ain't gonna lie. The only thing that I really want to say for real is like, I made a film by myself. Mm -hmm. Now, I don't say I have to say like, oh yeah, I did it, but it's like, whatever you're trying to do, just stop making excuses. Yeah, you for know? sure. Like, it, it's yeah, nothing for you sure. can't do for real. Like, yes. I was making so many excuses for so long. Like, I need this. I need these people. I need this budget. And it just took somebody to say like, bro, you know all this. What are you waiting on? Yeah. Okay, you mess up. <clears throat> you learn from that. Yeah. Keep going, so. You fail. Learn yeah. from it. <laughs> you got to keep pushing. That's that's what it's about for real. So if you got an idea, if you got something out there, just do what you got to do. Put that work in. You always see people at the finish line, but yeah. rarely do you ever see all the obstacles that they had to go through in order to get to that finish line. I'm saying people is running through real, real obstacles. Man. You know what I mean? Like, I forgot basis, what they call it in, in uh, um, that one... You got that one uh, race and track where they race around for a long time, but then they got the water yeah. and all the other shit. Is that the triathlon? Whatever the fuck I, that is. I think it, it's No, the triathlon, I think that's like with all the sports. Yes, but whatever it is where you're racing, you have all those obstacles that you have to go through. That's the same mm. thing that everybody goes through, right? And uh, you said what? The steeple run. There you go. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Shout out to K for that. But, you know, at the end of your journey, um, and and really that finish line is always going to dramatically change, right? You might Every get time. to this one finish and then be like, this ain't even where I wanted to stop. And you keep going, you know? I and, ain't gonna uh, lie, but about that, what I really learned along the way, and it's it takes time to really learn for real. Yeah. Don't fall in love with the results. Cause the results gonna be it's gonna be there one yeah. moment, gone the next. Yeah. You gotta yeah. fall in love with that journey. Yeah, yeah. for sure. That for sure. journey is what it's about because it's I love seeing the growth. Yeah. Like, oh, so yeah. It's about the growth. To boom, to boom. But it teach, growth teaches you patience to where yeah. like, you get frustrated in the growth, of course. And you do get caught up in the results sometimes. But 
once you notice that none of that shit actually matter, you start to get back to the level of loving the journey, like you said. Like, all right, yeah, this this is something that I like to do, so I'm gonna just keep doing it, and whatever happens, whatever happens. Most people that does do it in that way um, have more success of where they trying to go and how they gonna control their path. The people that's just kind of like, you know, chilling and woo woo, right? Yeah, we get to it, and they lose lose motivation and and never have it to come back, but want to come back when it's like good for them mm-hmm. most of the time they those would be the ones that's always distraught and trying to figure out what the world did wrong to them but that's the thing about growth you have to t- you have to be at ground level to be able to grow like a big ass tree you know what I'm saying? You, got you, gotta, to. you gotta make that soil first you gotta make sure that dirt is in there it's gonna be muddy it's gonna be dirty you know what i'm saying whatever but, but one day when the sun come out you're gonna start seeing shit sprout out like damn, not even results. It's just the fact that you love seeing this plant grow. It's like nigga, okay, I, I that was not like that yesterday. Yeah. All right, cool. Every, you know what I'm every, that was dope. everybody sees the trees, but they never see how small it was when it started. Yeah, right, never that tree do. was nothing. Right, yeah. and then when yeah. you you know throughout the years and years you come across it and it's grown to be whatever it is. Right, but. Nigga, that's literally that's even if that motherfucker died, you'd be like, it was a great journey. Hey, and that's the whole point, man. man. That's the whole point. I think this this episode was definitely something that rejuvenated me to want to get back into podcasting. So, um, glad that you and me tapped in on a journey and we was able to cross paths again. And of course, we're gonna continue to cross paths once again. We do this episode and this podcast here at In House Studios, where you can get some of your best quality recording. (laughs) Of course, your host Dre Barta. Next to me with the up and coming, nigga. Yes, I want. I want to say, nigga, best director in the city. You hey, feel me? I look forward to saying that for soon, sure. man. So, my nigga, Nico, ninety five films. Uh, if y'all got anything, tap in with the description below. By this time, that that feature film should be in that description box. Oh man. yeah, so for sure. Go check that for out. Sure. If anything, if everything, everything else under that Dre Barter tag. That's it. We out this motherfucker. I see all this. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs>